Now, street vendors have fallen through the cracks of coronavirus relief. So the Robin Hood Foundation and Morgan Stanley have partnered up to help. We have Wes Moore, CEO of the Robin Hood Foundation here with us. And just as a reminder for everyone at home, the Robin Hood Foundation is not affiliated with Robin Hood, the investment app. So unfortunately, if you are here for a cryptocurrency conversation, you will be a little bit disappointed. Uh, now, Wes, I, 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 I'm going I, to be- I, I could give my advice on it, but it probably wouldn't be worth very much to your viewers. <laughs> 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 yeah, but let's let's leave that to the side right now. Um, now, I'm going to be honest with you. I actually hadn't thought uh, of street vendors as I've been thinking of businesses struggling through this time. And I'm sure that I'm not the only one that 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 forgot about this community of people. I'm wondering, though, how they fell through the cracks, given all of this relief that has been at least a couple months ago was passed to hand out to the American people. Um, when at least how did they fall through when it comes to that economic aid from Congress? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a really important point because, you know, particularly for people who are in New York or other large cities, you know, you see them, but it isn't the type of thing where you think a whole lot about the economic circumstances and the conditions, why they would be hit the hardest. But the reality is they have been among those who have been hit the hardest during this entire pandemic, because with the absence of commuters and office workers and, and, and tourists, uh, their businesses are down anywhere from 70 to 90%. And to your point, because of the circumstances for many of them, most did not qualify for any form of government assistance given their immigration status. And since that was the case, since we knew that there was aid that was coming, um, but frankly, that these individuals were not going to be the recipients. That's why, you know, the, the work that we've been able to do with, with Morgan Stanley on this has been so critical and particularly at this juncture. Now, I'm wondering, given their immigration status, and, and anecdotally, I know a lot are also minorities, and these are two communities that have been particularly hit hard throughout this pandemic. What does that mean for their economic prosperity and health going forward? Are, are many of them going to be able to recover? Because we hear a lot, at least on the small business side, right? A, a lot of these businesses are going out of business. They're, they're not coming back. Restaurants shutting down, not coming back. What is the narrative when it comes to these street vendors going forward? It's heartbreaking because the, the reality for many of them in terms of will they come back is, is we just don't know. Uh, you know, these are individuals and these are these are entrepreneurs, many of them who uh, who are, you know, the first ones in their family uh, who are in this country or, or really the, the sole breadwinner for their families. Uh, and we think about how things worked when it came to the cash assistance element that uh, that we've seen thus far from the federal government and, and frankly, how how intentionally miserly that was, particularly for this population. So, for example, if you were undocumented, uh, who, by the way, represents a large portion of, of these uh, of these workers and these entrepreneurs that we're talking about. Uh, you know, even if you were working, even if you had a street card vendor and you were paying taxes, which they do, there was no cash assistance element to you and your circumstances and situation. And and I and really the credit, a lot of this goes to our friends over at Morgan Stanley, who, you know, they started hearing it from actually their employees who started saying, well, what happens to the person I used to get a pretzel from, or the person I used to get a hot dog from, or the person who was camped out in front of our building who I used to see every day. And they realized that they were gone and their chances and their prospects of coming back became so limited. So they actually contacted us and seeded it with a $2 million gift that we then came in and also supported to provide, you know, and, and gave technical support to really focus on distributing cash assistance and cash relief to over 2,000 street vendors in New York City alone during this holiday season. Because for so many of these individuals, it wasn't even just that the prospects started looking very dim. It was also that there was no other elements of support that were coming in to help them and their families at their greatest time of need. You know, Wes, when we talk about stimulus and economic aid, it's it's not just from congressional generosity. It, it is also from the fact that small businesses, uh, individuals, the consumer is a huge part of the economy. Seventy percent of the economy relies on the consumer. So you got to help the consumer to help the American economy. So when it comes to these street vendors and, you know, in New York City, there are a lot of them. What does helping them mean? for helping the New York economy, you know, for the Los Angeles economy, for example, if this were to be replicated somewhere else, how does boosting them, you know, help boost 
all of us. You know, it, it's uh, it, it helps us in so many different ways. You know, one, we do have to remember that these are taxpayers. Uh, and so the ability to be able to help them is actually going and still giving a foundation to be able to continue to stimulate our economy and still giving our economy the, the, the coffers that it needs in order to provide all these all these various essential services. The second component is these are family members. And by continuing to support them, you're also continuing to support their children. You're also continuing to support their aunts and their uncles and other members of the family who are relying on this income. And the third thing and actually arguably maybe the most important thing, it helps to continue to build up our psychology. It shows that we're back. It shows that we're going back to work. When you think about New York City alone, you think about our streetcar vendors. You think about the individuals who as you're going to a show or as you're going into a meeting or as you're just going down and walking through Central Park, these are the people that can provide you a little bit of food or some water or something that you needed at that moment on your way into whatever you had going on next. They are a part of the heartbeat of what makes New York, New York. And so it's both about how we're supporting them as individuals, as members of their family, but it also is about how are we then using this as an understanding of the psychology of what makes the city important and what means that the city is on its rebound. Absolutely, New York isn't New York if you can't get a dirty water hot dog and a pretzel and mustard. Uh, Wes, I do want to ask right. you, you know, while this partnership with Morgan Stanley is great, it really shouldn't have to exist in, in the first place uh, in, in reality. So if Congress is contemplating more stimulus, and they have said that they are uh, in, in the year 2021, what do they need to include to, to really make sure that folks like street vendors are protected and do receive the assistance that they desperately need. I think one thing that Congress needs to make sure that they include are the people who were excluded before. Uh, and it was people like the street card vendors. It was not just those who were undocumented, even if they were taxpayers, how they were excluded. It was also the fact that if you were part of mixed status household, i.e. you had a person in your family who was undocumented, that there was no support, there was no aid that came your way. If you were, if you were a student, uh, even living with your parents, there was no support that came your way. If you were working, but not making enough money to make it over the income tax filing threshold, there was no support that came your way. And so the thing that I would hope that Congress would look at and understand is when you're thinking about this next round of support, we have to do more to be able to zero in on supporting students. We have to do more to zero on supporting you know, teachers because we've had devastating impacts on the educational front when it comes to the impacts of COVID-19. But it's also about who did we forget the first time around, in many cases intentionally, and how do we make sure that we don't do that again? All right, Wes Moore, CEO of the Robin Hood Foundation. Always a pleasure to have you here with us chatting some Great. of these topics. Uh, look forward to having you join us again.